Welcome to week six, lesson two. This math lesson is for schools who are using the Bridges and Mathematics program. This lesson is for April 20th through 24th. Today, we will be learning about line plots. Are you ready to do some math learning? Let's get started. Today, we will interpret data by adding and subtracting fractions in order to solve real life problems involving line plots. You have worked with line plots in second grade and third grade, but we will take it a step farther in fourth grade. Think about it. Take a look at the picture. Each tab represents a value on the number line. What is the value of the missing tab when you are counting by ones? What about when you are counting by one half or when you are counting by one fourth? Finally, how could you draw number lines to find the missing values? If you are able, discuss with someone in your household. Let's see if we can find the value of the missing tab in each scenario. Here's the missing tab. When counting by ones, you could have counted the missing tab as the number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. When counting by one half, the value of each tab changes. Let's count by halves. One half, two halves or one, three halves, four halves or two, five halves, six halves. A simpler way to represent six halves is simply the number three. When counting by one fourth, the value of each tab changes again. Let's count by fourths. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths or one whole, five fourths, six fourths. Six fourths is an improper fraction to represent the missing tab. You can also represent it as a mixed number, which would be one and two fourths, or one and one half. Those are equivalent fractions. You could have also drawn number lines to show your skip counting to help you determine the missing values, either digitally or on paper. Let's learn about it. You can use line plots to interpret and answer questions about data. Let's go through some examples together. If you want to try them on your own and you are able to pause, feel free to pause and solve each question on your own and then play to check your answers. We will use this line plot to answer some questions. This line plot shows the hours spent in the pool by a number of children. If you are able, pause this video to notice and wonder about this line plot. You may either notice and wonder by yourself or with a member of your household. When you are ready, press play to continue and answer some questions. First, we will find the minimum of this line plot. The minimum is the lowest value in the data set. Let's look at the number line underneath the line plot. I see that one half is the lowest value that still has a data point. It still has an X. Therefore, one half is the minimum. Next, let's find the maximum. The maximum is the greatest value in the data set. Again, let's look at our number line. I see that two and one half is the greatest value in this data set that still has an X above it. Therefore, two and one half is the maximum. Note that two and three fourths and three are both on the number line and greater than two and one half. However, they don't have any data points in this set since there are no X's above them, so they can't be the maximum. Next, let's find the range. The range is the difference between the greatest and least values in a data set. In order to determine the range, you need to know the maximum and the minimum of your data set. We have already found that. The maximum is two and one half, and the minimum is one half. So to find the range, we will subtract two and one half minus one half. The range is two hours. Next, we will find the mode. The mode is the most occurring data point or points in the data set. Let's look at the number line on the line plot and look at the X's above. Which data point occurs the most? I see that six students swam for one and one half hours. That is more X's above the one and one half than above any other data, any other value in the number line. Therefore, one and one half is the mode. 
Now, let's find the median. The median is the middle value of the ordered data set. In a line plot, the data is already put in order. In order to find the median, that middle value, we can start from the outside and cross off a value from each side, one after the other, until we narrow it in to the middle value. That will be our median. Let's try it. It seems like we have two values left. However, they are both the same value. Therefore, those two values are the median. The median is one and one half, the same as the mode. Next, we will find the total data points. That's the total amount of data points in the set. In other words, how many children were surveyed or asked about this question. In order to do that, we simply need to count the exits since each X represents a child that was surveyed. We can do this by counting by ones, or we can count how many X's are above each value and then add the total. Let's do that. Above one half, there, there is one X. Above three fourths, there is two X's, and so on. Now that we have tallied up how many X's are in each column, we can add them together. If you would like to pause this video and add them on your own and then press play, feel free. When you add them all together, the total number of data points is 24. 24 children were surveyed. Here's our next question. How many children spent at least two hours in the pool? I'm noticing that the question asks for at least two hours. That means two hours and values greater than two are all included in this answer. Let's take a look. These are the values that represent at least two hours spent in the pool. We can count up how many X's there are and that will tell us how many children spent at least two hours in the pool. We have two children who spent two hours in the pool one child who spent one hour, or sorry, two hours and one fourth, two and one fourth hours in the pool, and one child who spent two and one half hours in the pool. If we add up those children, we get four. Four children spent at least two hours in the pool. Our new question is, what fraction of the children spent at least two hours in the pool? Hmm. We already know that four children spent at least two hours in the pool, but how, is, how can we turn that into a fraction? What fraction of the total amount of children is four? Well, there are 24 children who were surveyed and four of them spent at least two hours in the pool. So one way we can represent that fraction is four 24ths. We can also find an equivalent fraction in simplest form. That would be one sixth. Either of these answers are correct for the fraction of the children that spent at least two hours in the pool. Our next question is, how many hours did the two children who spent the most time in the pool spend swimming all together? There's a lot to unpack in this question. First, it looks like we want to know about the two children who spent the most time in the pool. Well, the child that spent the most time in the pool is our maximum. One child spent two and one half hours in the pool. The second greatest value is two and one fourth. So these are the two children who spent the most time in the pool. Now the question asks, how many hours did those two children spend swimming all together? So we are going to add those two mixed numbers to determine how much total time was spent swimming by those two children. So our problem will be two and one fourth plus two and one half. However, we are noticing that the denominators in those two fractions are not the same. We need to make them the same using equivalent fractions in order to add like denominators. I know that two and one half is the same thing as two and two fourths. If I swap two and one half for the equivalent fraction two and two fourths, I now have fourths and fourths and I can add more easily. 
Let's add the whole numbers first. 2 and 2 is 4. Next, we can add the fractions. 1 fourth plus 2 fourths equals 3 fourths. If we add 4 plus 3 fourths, we will get 4 and 3 fourths. The two children who spent the most time in the pool swimming spent 4 and 3 fourths hours in the pool. Our last question says, what is the total amount of time spent by all of the children in the pool? Hmm, let's think about this one. This is different from the question that asked, what is the total amount of data points? For that one, we just had to count up the X's because we wanted to know how many children were surveyed. This is asking about time. Each X represents a different amount of time depending on where it's sitting in the line plot. This X, for example, represents half an hour, but this X represents one and one fourth hours, and this X represents two and one half hours. In order to answer the question, asking for the total amount of time spent by all of the children, we need to determine what each X represents and then add them all together. This will take some time. If you have a piece of scratch paper with you and you would like to try to pause and solve this on your own and then come back and check, feel free. Let's start by looking at the X above one half. Okay? That X represents one half an hour. There's only one of them, so we don't have to add anything there. However, I'm noticing from looking at the number line on the bottom of the line plot that all of the other denominators are in fourths. So instead of keeping this in one as one half, I would like to change it to an equivalent fraction in fourths. One half is equivalent to two fourths. Now let's look at the next column, three fourths. There are two X's. Let's zoom in to determine what is the total value of that column. Since there are two X's above the value three fourths, that is the same as adding three fourths and three fourths. Each X represents three-fourths, and there are two of them. Three-fourths plus three-fourths equals six-fourths. Six-fourths is the same as one and two-fourths. So we will add one and two-fourths to our line plot. That is the total of these two Xs. Now, let's go to the next column. This, all of the Xs in this column represent one hour spent at the pool. One is easy to add, there are four of them, so we can count one, two, three, four. That column represents four hours. The next column is for one and one fourth hours. Let's zoom in. The four X's represent one and one fourth, plus one and one fourth, plus one and one fourth, plus one and one fourth. Let's add these four mixed numbers together. We'll start with the whole numbers. When you add up one plus one plus one plus one, that equals four. Next, let's add the fractions. One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth equals four fourths, which is the same as one whole. Four plus one equals five. Let's add five to our line plot. Next, we have one and one half. Again, let's zoom in to have enough workspace to add. Wow, there are six X's above one and one half, meaning there are six data points that represent one and one half. We are going to add one and one half six times. If we add the whole numbers first, we add one six times and that equals six. Next, we will add one half six times. That is the same as six halves. Six halves is equivalent to three. You can also see three by looking at the repeated addition equa equation and noticing that one half and one half is one whole, another two halves is one whole, and another two halves is one whole. We have one, two, three. If we add six and three, we get nine. Those six X's above one and one half represent a total of nine hours spent in the pool. Next, we have one and three fourths. Let's zoom in. Those three X's represent one and three fourths plus one and three fourths plus one and three fourths. If we add the whole numbers together first, that equals three. If we then add three fourths three times, that equals nine fourths, which is the same as two and one fourth. And finally, we may add two, three plus two and one fourth together. 
that equals five and one fourth hours. We add that to our line plot, we are almost finished. Next, the column that represents two hours spent in the pool has two X's. We can count by twos, two, four. That column represents four hours. The next column only has one X, that X represents two and one fourth hours. And the last spot has one X as well. That one X represents two and one half hours. Wow, that was a lot of work to add those up, but we're not done yet. Our question asks us to find the total amount of time spent by all of the children in the pool. So we have to add up all of these fractions, mixed numbers, and whole numbers together. Let's start with the whole numbers. Okay, we have them circled there. If we add all of those whole numbers up together, we will get 32, 32 hours. Next, let's add the fractions. If we add those five fractions together, that will give us a total of eight fourths, which is equivalent to two. Finally, we can add 32 plus two in order to get 34. The total amount of time spent by all of the children in the pool was 34 hours. Try it. Now it's your turn to practice. In your Bridges packet, complete page 123 Rope Climb Results and Skills Review. Finally, you will show what you know by completing page 127 in your Bridges Packet, Danny's Data, as an assessment. This is what you will turn in to your teacher. Well, boys and girls, it's been a blast hanging out with you and doing some math around line plots. Until next time, have a great day.